I'm Martin Pring and I really would like to welcome you to this series of technical analysis tutorials. In these presentations we'll be covering the basics to better equip you as traders and investors. As always I suggest that you hit the subscribe button because from time to time I'll be coming out with more educational videos and when the opportunities present themselves for some market timing situations. There is, of course, a lot more information at my website, pring.com. But enough of the commercials. Let's get started. And the title of this presentation is Timing Trades with a Stochastic Indicator. So without more ado, let's get started. The stochastic indicator was developed by George Lane several decades ago. It's essentially a moving average momentum system, and it works on the assumption that as prices reach the end of an uptrend, so there's a tendency for the closing price to develop further away from the session high, and vice versa during a downtrend. The indicator is plotted within the boundaries of 0 on the downside and 100 on the upside. The formula guarantees that the indicator will never exceed these levels. For the stochastic, the overbought and oversold readings are always placed at 80 and 20 respectively. Now there's two parts to the stochastic, the percent %K and the percent %D. They are essentially two moving averages. To avoid confusion, think of K as quick, spelt with a K instead of a Q, and D as dawdle. Thus K is the more sensitive average and D the smoother of the two. There are many ways of interpreting this indicator but the most common approach is to take advantage of its smooth characteristic and use percent %K crossovers of percent %D usually at overbought and oversold extremes. There are two or three parameters that go into the construction of the stochastic. That for the percent %K and that for the percent %D. Most charting software products give you the opportunity to plot a third parameter called the slowing factor, which I recommend. Inclusion of this factor smooths out the percent %K. In effect, the slowing factor has the same effect of smoothing the percent %K with another moving average. Here's an example of a 10-10 combination. And this one in the bottom window features a 10-10-10 combination. You can see how the slowed stochastic in the bottom window is much smoother than its almost random neighbor in the center panel. I much prefer the more smooth version myself. Another way of obtaining a more deliberate path is to increase the time span. This one picks up intermediate moves on daily charts and it's a 40-20-20 combination. Now obviously you don't want to increase the time span too much or you will miss out on a lot of the short term moves. Here's the French ETF, the EWQ, but this time with stochastic parameters of 150, 100 and 75. I find that intraday charts of virtually any time frame, the 20-10-10 combination works pretty well. Let's take a look at some of the signals from this hourly chart of the iShare Lehman 20 year trust the TLT. At this point I'd like to remind you of two things. First, not every signal is actionable. And second, that some signals won't work because the prevailing trend is too strong. Here we see a sell signal which was actionable because it was confirmed by a trend line violation, as was this buy signal. The next sell signal was followed by a lengthy decline, but there was no evidence of a trend line violation price pattern completion or any other sign that the price was confirming. Now look at these two buy signals flagged by the orange arrows. They don't work. And let me shade in the area between the two vertical blue lines and take you from this hourly chart to this daily one. Here's the same period. Now you can see that the stochastic for the dominant daily chart was bearish whilst that for the hourly chart was bullish. Not surprisingly, the daily chart won. 
See how the indicator reversed to the upside at this point. Now if we go back to the hourly chart, you can see that this buy signal did work as it was in tune with what was happening on the daily chart. In summary, 1. The stochastic indicator is essentially a moving average system. 2. Overbought and oversold crossovers are one way it can be applied to trading. 3. The 20-10-10 combination can be used for intraday charts. And 4. Always make sure signals are confirmed by the price and that the more dominant trends are operating in the same direction as your signals. If you'd like to watch and read a much more in-depth explanation of a multitude of momentum indicators, including the RSI, MACD and Stochastics, then you will profit from my definitive guide to momentum indicators, a 42 chapter, just under 500 page workbook CD combination. This package comes complete with a 10 hour audio visual tutorial, just like this presentation, as well as an interactive quiz so you can test your own knowledge. Details of this and our other tutorial DVDs, newsletters, seminars and conservative money management programs can be found at our website at pring.com. In the meantime, good luck and good charting.